All right, so now we have the topic of FIR, Finite Impulse Response Filter Design. And actually, I will, I will give you one design method there. It's called so-called windowing method. Uh, just because it actually makes perfect sense. So, but before that one, a couple of words about the uh, filtering fundamentals. Uh, so filters are defined, are divided into different classes like low pass, bad pass, band stop, high pass, multiband filters. So this is basically based on the amplitude response. Then the digital filters are categorized basically in two types. One is for FIR filters and another one IIR filters. And now we are talking about linear time invariant systems. Still talking about those. So basically, the, uh, if you have a low-pass filter, all the low-pass filters have the following. Uh, just a moment, I'll check that. Yes, audio is on. Uh, following properties. So basically, you have the pass band, which means that the, uh, all the signals within this region are passing through the system unchanged, practically unchanged. Uh, then we have the stop band. Stop band is the uh, is the area of frequencies where you want attenuation on the signal. So basically, most of the cases we actually have a need for low pass filter, where you have the higher uh, higher uh, the, the the band is actually mostly soft noise. For example, for clarifying human speech. Human uh, normal speech is below 1000 hertz. You can basically design a filter to cut the uh, this this uh, higher frequency noise after, uh, out after that one. Although you are starting to lose some information too, since S has also wide spectral characteristics. But anyways, you can reduce the noise. But anyway, so we have pass band and we have a stop band. Pass band is characterized actually by the ripple, okay? And the pass band bandwidth is characterized by the cut of frequency. Stop band uh, is characterized by stop band attenuation and actually the stop band start frequency right there. Whatever is in between the pass band and stop band is the transition band. So when we are talking about transition band width, it's the width or width uh, or actually the uh, how fast the uh, this this uh, attenuation will be affecting the signal. Okay, so that's the characterization of low pass filter. High pass filter, it's basically just the opposite. We have the stop band on the on the beginning of the frequency range. We have the pass band on on the higher band, and then we have the transition band in between. So, but otherwise the the characterization is exactly the same. We have single uh, corner frequency for the pass band, and then we have a single frequency for the uh, uh, where the stop band ends now, and we have some characteristic attenuation. Um, band pass filter parameters are actually a little bit different since we have two stop bands and at the middle we have two, one pass band. And of course then we have two transition bands, but nothing more than that. Both of these uh, stop bands and transition bands have just a different characterization. So those are the uh, parameters that you tweak or are set based on the application, based on the requirement, and those you need to then fit with your uh, filter design. Band stop, it's just the opposite that the previous one. Now we have two pass bands and one stop band in between although it has two transition bands. Okay.
Then on the passband, one measure of the flatness of the passband is, is the ripple, which means a variation of passband amplitude response. Um, okay, uh, usually on audio, if you have two decibel ripple, it does not, you cannot hear the difference. It's too little to hear the difference. You start to have more than three decibels, then you might actually hear some some change, but not, not, yeah, no, no, you can't. <laughs> so basically, the, uh, when you are uh, adjusting, for example, your car tone, you are usually uh, adjusting by 10 dB or 20 dB to hear any difference from the, you know, usually you just push the, all the bass will go to the, you know, <laughs> high volume and then then the middle, middle, middle sounds will be down, down there somewhere. That's how you make your cars go boom, boom, boom. <laughs> okay, so increase the volume bad. Okay, but anyway, so, so we have the transition uh, uh, on the pass band. There's ripple, 2 dB is acceptable for audio, but, but this actually can be uh, again, this is a variable that will be set by the uh, application. Uh, this course, unfortunately, we don't have time to go through in which applications exactly you would choose something, but instead there's actually, um, the, the, the exercises have set the parameters that, that you need to meet. So it's about designing the filters based on the, uh, uh, the characters it should have. Um, one notice when you have set the uh, ripple at some level then the corner frequency is defined by the point where this um, basically the, the, on the edge on that minus 2 db point not necessarily minus 3 db point not well on rc filters analog filters most of the time, the cutoff frequency is defined by the 3 dB point. Well, you have to set it somewhere. But for this kind of 2 dB, dB ripple or 1 dB ripple uh, filters, then you set the uh, ripple level at the, at the cutoff corner uh, frequency rate. Okay, that's a minor detail, but anyways. Okay. Finite impulse response filter. Why you would be using finite impulse response filters anyways? So two good reasons. FIR is always stable. You cannot actually make unstable filters by using FIR. Meaning uh, not the numbers are not coming out of the, uh, your calculations. You can still actually overload your system, fixed point system like integral arithmetics, you can still have the overload there. But it's not that as bad as say, not a number divided by zero. Um, okay, another one is linear phase response. Uh, okay, if the uh, impulse response is symmetric, then you also have guaranteed linear phase response. Symmetric meaning symmetric, symmetricity along the, uh, so mirror symmetricity on both sides. So basically, if you have the, uh, <clears throat> the right hand side looking like this, then basically you must have the same looking impulse response on this other side. So impulse response must be symmetric. Then it's guaranteed to have linear phase response. Um, well, different web methods. One is impulse response truncation, always to start with windowing method is the one we will be go, going, will be using here, uh, which because of the simple design flow, there are also optimized design methods. That's the way to go. But that actually requires some, say, 
higher, uh, highly developed tools. The MATLAB toolboxes have those. Uh, I'm not sure if Octave has it, has the same tools. And if they are, they are not that easy to use. So that's why we are not using these. But instead, we are going through the window method. And that actually also because this is also educationally better way to go. Since we start from ideal filter and then do some magic, math and magic. <clears throat> okay, just as a curiosity and to somehow reflect the uh, what we have learned this far, impulse response. I told you that impulse response will define the behavior of a system. So how about if we have an analog system, we hit it with a unit step, we get analog analog unit uh, uh, analog step response. We then sample this one, meaning that we are measuring this one actually with the DSO, digital plant sampling oscilloscope. We make the S of N is simply that sampled the uh, step response, then we remember, okay, there was the uh, basically, um, da da da, impulse can be actually calculated from the dif differential of step function. If this is linear system, what we are actually measuring, then the same thing basically is true for impulse response. So this is simply S of N minus S of N minus one, which you already know how to calculate with the uh, octave. So, so basically measuring a step response from a real life system, any analog system with digital oscilloscope scope, then you would take the uh, differential. So this is just a difference of two subsequent samples. So this is filter one minus one, one and H, H you measured. Oh, actually SS. Yes, yes. Ha, ah, that gives you the uh, impulse response of the system. Real life systems are always uh, the bad thing that they are actually IIR systems. But now we can truncate at some point. We just cut when we uh, basically say, okay, now we have hit the noise floor with this. Uh, impulse response. At some point here, you can actually see only noise. And basically, you take the impulse response from that one, and tada, now you have a digital digital uh, present, representation of this analog system. And an example, RC low pass filter function generator Okay, resistor, capacitor, that's where I feed it in the uh, input signal of function generator, and this is the oscilloscope lead from digital sampling oscilloscope. That's the analog system, the, uh, uh, the, the, the amplitude response. So that's the set lab set, set up. I measured the uh, waveform, that was the step function, what I measured, and where it's almost step. So this is the step response, measure step response. And that blue is actually calculated amplitude response of the digitized system. So I measured 
step response with digital sampling oscilloscope did this filtering then truncated the uh, impulse response and calculated the corresponding frequency response. So this is just facts here. Okay, and as you can see, we hit the noise floor somewhere. Yeah, can be done, not the greatest way to do it, but anyways, it shows that, okay, it some, somehow actually makes sense. And there we have the, uh, I did, then did some simulations, is that one end up having a lot of noise on it. Uh, the problem with the, uh, this truncation method that it always fails at high frequency components. On the previous picture, uh, well, it's not that obvious because of the noise, but anyways, mm, this one is actually, the blue line is going a little bit like that because of the aliasing effect. Continuous time systems, basically, if you calculate the frequency response, they are have, you know, even the uh, infinite frequency here. But for sample systems, we have the sample rate over two is the highest frequency you, what you can uh, measure, which means that this see, does not uh, disappear anywhere, but it aliases on this. It basically folds back to the uh, this zero to fs over two range. That's what happens. Which means that that's why we have always this kind of behavior for if you if you do the truncation of a real system. Okay. Windowing method is a smarter way of doing this. Much smarter, actually. So, windowing method, we start with the ideal low pass filter. Let me draw. Some things again, ideal Lopez filter. Okay, what does it look like? So ideal Lopez filter in frequency space means that we have a cut of frequency here, FC. Um, I will also now draw the uh, negative frequencies since they're always there. We just usually just draw the uh, that right hand side because this is such a mirror image. But ideally, low pass filter passes all frequency between minus FC and FC without any attenuation. So this actually is a unity gain there, and then. On the stop band, it starts immediately here, and there's an infinite suppression on the uh, stop band. That's ideal low pass filter. So it doesn't pass anything on the stop band. Okay, it will be nice to have both. Unfortunately, it does not exist. However, we can actually calculate the closest. Um, Closest approximation. This is on frequency space, and this is a box function in frequency space. First, what we do for that one, we do inverse Fourier transformation, which is just the inverse operation of Fourier transformation. It's just a mathematical operation again. It just transforms this uh, frequency uh, base data to time base data. No magic, just mathematics. 
and it just appears that this actually uh, the box function on frequency space corresponds to sync function in time space. Okay, so that actually is sync. Uh, okay, I think it's FCT. Well, something times T. And then there's a, a multiplying factor there too. Oh, sync, by the way, that's C, sine X over X or sine pi X divided by pi X. Um, depending on way you are reading it, it sometimes has the, uh, uh, basically, uh, the, the pi x, and sometimes it's just x, depending if it's a mathematics book or engineering book. Okay, sync x. Okay, so it has a functional form, which is easy to calculate, but this is now an analog system, so we have a uh, 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 infinite frequency space, and we have continuous time space from minus infinity to infinity. But no worries, we can sample this. Okay, let's take and sample the thing. For example, like something like this. Maybe like that. Oh, okay. Oops. No, no, that, that was there. And at some point, we want to just truncate this one, since we cannot calculate infinite numbers in 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 computer. So we have to cut it. And how we cut it? Uh, basically, what we do is uh, we do the same thing as we did on on the um, earlier when we did subsampling, we multiply it with a box. It goes zero here and zero there. So mathematically, when you take a subsample of anything, we are multiplying with the box. Okay. Now, when you do the analysis of this system, Meaning you do the, this is impulse response, you do actually frequency response by taking the Fourier, Fourier transformation of the impulse response to check what it looks like in the um, discrete Fourier transform. Okay, first of all, we will, of course, incorporate some information about information about the uh, sampling rate. This has some sampling rate. So there the uh, Fs equals 1 over Ts. So it has sampled with some rate. It also actually uh, appears here somehow magically. However, the good thing is actually this method, it, it preserves the cutoff frequency. And actually, the, mathematically, the Fourier transform is sampled sync when it's infinitely long, will be the same as this box here. So it's uh, still the same. So we have a perfect control of our um, cut of frequency by calculating the sync and sampling it. It does not change. However, this box appears as a sync function in frequency space. So basically the Fourier transform and the inverse Fourier transform, they are very close to each other. It's just a matter of sign and what, what, what is integrated there. 
So basically this box now appears as sync in frequency domain. And this is a multiplication of box times this sampled, oh, the, the, uh, yes, sampled sync. Then basically on on the um, frequency domain, the total amplitude response of this system actually looks something like this. Absolute value. All right. Nice thing about this is that it preserves still the uh, cutoff rate frequency, cutoff rate, but it will give the sync actually gives some uh, problem on the stop band. It's not infinite anymore. That comes from the box. And let me do try something now for with the. Um, Octave. So I will try to basically do this one. Design a uh, low pass filter on frequency space, which means I'm, I'm not drawing anything. I'm just setting the cut off rate. For example, we have a. Um, oh, where I am? Uh, where is my cursor? Okay. First. Okay, so some some title there. So this is FIR Lopez filter designed by windowing. So first, let's set up some parameters. Say two kilo, two thousand hertz uh, sampling rate, and let's put the cut of frequency, for example, at two hundred hertz. Um, yeah, yeah, that works just fine. So basically, that's 200, this is 1000. Okay, um, for just for fun, I will also calculate the sampling rate over two, which is also the Nyquist rate or Nyquist frequency. This is just half of the sampling rate. So this is FS over two is actually FN, just, just for fun. Then I will do the sampled sync from just arbitrary index, for example, minus 10 to plus 10, symmetric. Symmetric because I want to have a linear phase response. All right, so I have the um, region of interest from minus 10 to plus 10. So this is a width of the, um, the, the impulse response. There, okay. Now I should have all the parameters that I can calculate the uh, sync. Um, there, window sync equals. Uh, let me humor you by putting a one constant here. This is a scaling factor to make this unity gain. So FC over FN. Uh, and then I hope that this sync is actually sync pi x divided by pi x. If not, then I have to rescale everything. But <laughs> let's, let's see. Uh, sync fc over fn times just that n n. Yes.
let's try that one. And actually, this is my uh, impulse response of the system. Now we can calculate the frequency response. Frequency response is just frequency. H, H. Okay, these are the parameters B. And then parameter A is 1. The uh, remember the difference equation again. We have a type of system with this has y of n equals to since we don't have any feedback term we have just this h of k times x n minus k fir system doesn't have any feedback impulse response is directly the same as the filter coefficients b b then a is one one times y n and then the signal, what, why I'm doing this? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. One, and then how many points, and then sample rate. Wow, you should see this. <laughs> okay, see, I have designed a filter with 200 hertz cutoff frequency, unity gain on pass band, Almost perfect, except the stop and attenuation is crappy. We have a lot of high spectral components in our system. It passes a lot of high spectral components. Where those actually come from? You can see it. You can actually see it on the window. Window shape. We have a square window, which means that we need a lot of high frequency components to present this edge. If this edge was smoother, then it would have more low spec components that high spectral components on on the power of this uh, spectrum uh, of this 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 uh, box okay or even smoother than it would have a you know even less high spectral components so now when we have basically the sink to cover the uh, Cutoff frequency, we still need to work on the parameters to get or modify the system to get better, better uh, uh, stop and attenuation. And that's done with choosing a smooth window. Um, there are some standard windows actually which looks, uh, looks better for that purpose. Uh, but I think we could actually go back to the presentation now. Okay. Now we are basically up here. Sample the impulse response and truncate window to get symmetric disk clamp impulse response. Use an, imp <laughs> use an appropriate window to smooth the edges for desired Stop and attenuation. Point four. Okay, there, there we have the same thing what I did already. Convolution, okay, de, 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 blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Smooth window uh, shapes. All righty. If you have this rectangular window, you get stop and attenuation, something between 20 and 30 dB, which is basically nothing. Well, then we have these different um, the, the uh, pioneers, Bartlett, Hanning, Hamming, and Blackman, who has been actually uh, uh, having thought of those, uh, what kind of safe window it should have. Bartlett was basically pioneer in di digital signal processing and thought that, okay, triangular window is really fast to calculate. Yes. So triangular window is just 
like that. Anyone can calculate that, uh, the uh, shape of that window. That already gives you, say, 25 to 40 dB stop band attenuation. But it's okay, not enough. Uh, now, basically, Hanning, Hamming, and Blackman are the ones are uh, used mostly on this windowing method, or Kaiser window, actually. Kaiser window is a, a window generator to generate any stop and attenuation you need. Well, almost any. But anyways, these are just different uh, types. So this is half cycle symmetrical biased cosine. So basically, biased cosine meaning that it's cosine, but there's a bias like that and goes something like this. So it's cosine shape, but it has a bias up. So it doesn't have any zeros of the end. This is actually easy, also easy to calculate. And then Hamming is half cycle uh, asymmetrically biased cosine. <laughs> uh, and then this black money is half cycle cosine and full cycle harmonic. Okay, but, but uh, basically you don't need to remember all of those. You, you can actually just call the window function and see what happens. Let's try something from there. Um, back to the MATLAB. My favorite window is Blackman. So we select the window as, for example, the Blackman. I hope this works, and then we put this, the parameter is the size of this window, and we use the same size as our impulse response. Although we transpose this one, since this will return a column vector as our the impulse response is actually a row vector. So we need to fix those so that so we can basically combine them easier. Either transpose here or transpose later. Well, maybe I will transpose it later. So there you can see that's H H is one by twenty one and that WW is twenty one by one. Okay. Um and we need to multiply element by element. So basically, now my windowed sink is www dot, oh, sorry, prime, meaning the transpose, times my original impulse response. Okay, and let's see the frequency response. I will, I will put this one on a different figure. You should see that. <laughs> All right, there we have it. So what is the real difference here? Okay, we started from... Uh, we started from the uh, box win window. It has 200 hertz uh, cut of frequency, which comes from the sink, and it has about 25 to 30 dB at the Mason stop and and look at this one. We still have the 200, D, 200 hertz uh, cut of frequency for the uh, pass band, but my stop band has about 70, 70 dB attenuation. Wow. Much better. So it's down here. 
that really is already filtering something. Okay, good. Now we have just one parameter. So basically we can set the cutoff frequency, we can set the uh, stop and attenuation. We have the stop and ripple basically just that, well, it's 3 dB because it, this doesn't have the ripple there. Uh, now we need to set the uh, transition bandwidth because this might be a bit too much. So the stop band probably should be starting somewhere in here. How to fix the transition bandwidth? There we can use some, say, uh, general rules. Oops, transition bandwidth. Uh, you can set the transition bandwidth by multiplying the time. So think of a, a time and frequency, they are kind of connected like, well, sampling rate is one over TS and TS is one of FS. So basically, if you multiply time somehow, you actually are dividing frequency, meaning wider take more points. If you take two times more samples in here, you cut transition bandwidth to half. I will prove it to you. Let's see. More points into... Uh, the, the, the impulse response H H. Uh -huh. I'll make this one. Ah. Mm. So we have the N N. Where's my, okay, there. I will do down 20, minus 20 to 20. So I have, I'm basically doubling the width. So it was 20, was the, 21 was the previous uh, uh, width of the system. So now we have 41 points on the impulse response. The second one, and then we need to calculate the HH again with this parameter, and I'm changing only the width here. We have to calculate the uh, window again for these parameters. Okay, and then we also need to calculate, of course, the, uh, the windowed sink. And then I need to do another figure and do the frequency response of H W W two, not three, but two, one and twenty-four and F S and see what this one actually looks like. Oh, you should see this. Um there we go. So we started with this. Okay, that was the original win, uh, with a uh, rectangular window. Then we did the uh, smoother window, that was Blackman window. And we were not uh, happy with the transition bandwidth here. The transition bandwidth is from 200 to about 500 hertz, so this is 250 or 240 hertz. Uh, I wouldn't it have, so it, this, the following should have 120 hertz transition bandwidth. Let's see if I manage to do that. Yes, it works. <laughs> So the transition bandwidth here is half, 
of that one. So double the width, it uh, basically suppresses the, uh, all the, the transition bandwidth. Good. That was fun. So basically, let's go back. Let's go back to this one. So there are these uh, different, different uh, windows that give different uh, the, the stop bands. So first, you will start with a number for, for number of data points. You just need to take this one from somewhere. You actually can kind of guesstimate what it could be with, with some, uh, say, uh, higher uh, end tools. But anyways, you can, for example, start from minus 10 to 10 always. always. Then fix the stop band attenuation, taking appropriate window. And finally, adjust your window width so that it actually fit. You, you can get, uh, you know, the transition band narrow enough, but not too narrow. Okay, so basically, yeah, those three things. Cut of frequency comes from sync, which actually makes the transition bandwidth, and then this uh, this window shape changes the. Uh, this uh, stop and attenuation. That's as simple as it is. They're, they're basically one example of how the uh, transition bandwidth is changed when you take 11, 21, 41, and 81. So basically, that's with the 11 points. That's basically half of that one because of the 21, and this is half of that one, and so on. Okay. There, so selecting a uh, or adjusting this transition bandwidth just simple time multiplication thingy. Good. Now we have a low pass filter, but that's not the only filter we uh, we actually need. We sometimes need the high pass filter. Fortunately, with the FIR filter, we can use modulation. Modulation. Actually, this is fun since, uh, again, we use the convolution, convolution in frequency space. As I said a uh, couple of times before, the filtering is based on the fact that you can actually, uh, if you multiply signal spectrum in frequency space. It basically is exactly the same as convoluting the signal in time space, but also works the other way around. The same way as the uh, window shape actually is convoluted with this uh, sync box to get the final the, uh, frequency response the same way uh, basically, if you have our have a um, time space, you have x n times any other. Well, let's put it for, for example f m. Then, on frequency space, you have a convolution, meaning well x of omega convoluted with f of omega, okay, meaning that if you want to transform this kind of system into any other similar system, you just modulate the signal, modulate, meaning multiply with sinusoid. Okay, since this 
if this is a sinusoid, it is such a sim single frequency, single frequency peak in spectrum. Convolute these together, basically just this um, the filter amplitude response is transformed on both sides of that one. So it basically just uh, transforms the uh, axis. Okay. Let's try that one. Low pass to high pass. Low pass to high pass means that we are modulating the signal with Nyquist frequency. Modulation with Nyquist frequency is basically, oh, let me use cosine. Cosine 2 times pi times modulation frequency is Fs over two uh, times Ts times n, okay, which is cosine, wow, uh, f divided, f times Ts is actually one pi times n. So that is the modulation by Nyquist frequency, which is minus 1 to power of n. So you change the every other sign of your the uh, impulse response, you can get a high pass filter. And seeing is believing low pass to high pass, high pass filter. H H W W high pass equals H H W W I use the number two here dot times minus one to power of oops minus one to power of hmm? power of my indexes n and 2. That changes the sign of every other term. Right? Ah, what happened here? Oh, sorry. Dot operation here. n is, is vector. So it, it's a element-wise Element-wise uh, uh, thingy again. Let me do another figure and uh, put the room uh, high pass here, and there we go. We have a nice high pass filter, which is just the. Um, Exactly the mirror image of this one. Uh, as a reminder, when you are doing it like that, so then basically this bandwidth will remain the same. But of course, when you, when you define the cut of frequency, cut of frequency here is somewhere at 800 hertz. That's the high pass filter cut of frequency. On the exercise, I have set up the cut of frequency for the high pass filter. So the design parameters for high pass filter is there. So you need to use this bandwidth to generate the low pass filter, which you then transform to the high pass. Okay. So that's the low pass to four high pass. When you add low pass and high pass, you get band stop. Yeah. You just have these two filters, uh, basically this, this um, low pass filter and high pass filter. If you add them, super precision basically tells you that, okay, you've got the stop band 
there in between, although it has um, uh, about 3 dB higher level here than the original uh, the stop bands, because you are adding adding them together. So attenuation gets about, about 3 dB lower. Okay. So you first basically, if you need stop band filter FIR, you first design low pass filter, then you start designing high pass filter by designing first the low, corresponding low pass filter, transform it to, to high pass, and then add them together. How to add these together? Well, um, easy. So, band stop equals low pass plus high pass. Okay, I can do that one right here plus HSWW2. So those, uh, just make sure that you have the same order filters on high pass and low pass, otherwise you get errors. And, okay, that is one, one uh, uh, band stop filter, which was actually done by this low, adding by this low pass filter with that high pass filter. And that was the result. Makes sense, right. Um, then the last filter type would be bandpass filter. Bandpass filter basically you just have the modulation frequency somewhere else than the this high pass uh, special case. So you modulate it by cosine two pi, your modulation frequency uh, divided by the sample rate uh, times n. Oh, where did I have the bandpass? Oh, yeah, low pass to bandpass transformation. There I have the low pass to bandpass. You need to define the modulation frequency, which is the center frequency of your bandpass filter. Uh, for example, I have, uh, let's put it on. 400 hertz, for example, 400, just for example. That's the modulation frequency, so H, H, W, W, band pass equals H, H, W, W, 2 dot times cosine or 2 times pi times FM divided FS times n and two times two. We need to rescale this one. So basically, if you are transforming this uh, filter into any other than the high pass, then basically you are splitting the spectrum, meaning that half of the power will be on negative side, half the power on the positive side, you need to re, re, uh, uh, basically you need to do some for the, for something for the gain. This is just mathematical trick what we need to do. So uh, rescaling by two, but you can always you know how to make unity gain filters, right? You just calculate the amplitude response and set it maximum to one. But let's do it this way. Bandpass. Hmm. What? What did I do wrong here? I did something wrong. Do you see any errors here? So since I got something, something that does not actually, this, it, this is not supposed to be like that. Oh, 
Huh. Well, I'll figure it out for tomorrow, but anyways, it's supposed to be, be basically looking quite much different. Oh, wait a minute, 400. No, 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 this is, this is, this is wrong. This is, ah, I see. <laughs> uh, nothing. I, I just added the Lobas filter here. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> well, Lobas plus bad pass, so it's... <laughs> uh bye, oh, bye, bye, bye. Some of these days. So yeah, I I don't I don't need to add the low pass filter part here. That was my mistake. And let's put it on the correct window. There now see. Ha! Band pass filter. Center band uh, center is at four hundred hertz. And now remember well, remember this one. The spectrum is always, you know, have that this negative and positive side. That's the, for low pass filter. The uh, bandwidth is defined from zero to uh, cutoff frequency. Okay, and that one is actually now from 400 to there. So that's the. Uh, the, 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 now, the bandwidth of this um, transform filter actually has double bandwidth because, well, positive and negative side, they're both moved, you know, on both sides. It's symmetric. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else to do here. Summary. Select. Minus 3 dB of uh, low pass filter, meaning, well, cut of frequency. Select window shape for stop and attenuation. Adjust window width for transition bandwidth. Transform to either band pass, band high pass, or band stop if needed. There. That was ba basically I covered both the lectures and the lab tutorial. Okay, tomorrow morning at some point I will show you the last part which is the uh, uh, the, the IIR filter design tricks. Okay, otherwise class dismissed. Thank you.